بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة دائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين We left our discussion last time with regards to prayer We said Muharram is the perfect time for prayer is the perfect time for forgiveness It's the perfect time for our tears to count but we said there were certain categories, certain pitfalls that we shouldn't fall into. We said there were eight categories in which Imam Ali alayhi salam said if one falls into, his prayers won't be accepted. We named four of those and four we will name today. The fifth one which we will name today is people who know that they would love to be in heaven and they would hate to be in hell. Certain people have the blessing to understand how beautiful heaven would be and how demeaning and nasty hell would be for us to be in. They have this knowledge within themselves. At the same time, with this knowledge, which in itself is a blessing, what they do is go against it. Their deeds show differently. Instead, of every day getting closer to heaven, they get further away from it towards hell. Step by step, they get further and further away from heaven. With the deeds that they do, with the steps that they take, they get nearer to hell and away from heaven. Imam Ali says, these people, however much they pray, their prayers won't be accepted. The sixth group of people whose prayers will not be accepted no matter what. is people who have been blessed and don't give thanks for it. Every day in our lives, we're blessed with many and many things. We ourselves are needy in every single way. When I go home, I need a roof over my head. I need someone warm to sleep in. I need my organs to work in order to get up and move. I need my joints to be supple to walk around. I need God to give me a bit of bread. I need God to give me some water for my thirst. I need God to give me safety so I can sleep. Our needs are finite. There's no there's infinite. There's no... There's no uh, place where it stops there's no full stop it goes on and on and on I could stay here for two days and speak about all the needs that we have and there will still be plenty more left so with all this neediness that we are and with all the blessings that God has given us how, to, how much of a shame is it not to thank him for it and understand that this God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not needy for your thanks. His position doesn't rise any higher, nor does he become more fulfilled or happy or sad because of your thanks. But it's you that need to thank him. It's you that need to be fulfilled. It's you that's needy. It's us that need to pray to God. It's us that need to understand who this God is, who's created he heaven, he heaven, hell, waters, skies, ourselves, all the other planets, and the systems in which they work in. Everything in perfect order, and this God is just. Everything that happens, happens for a reason. Now once we understand this, and once we know this, and we thank Him, Truly thank Him from the bottom of our hearts for all the things that He's given us. Then surely we'll be more fulfilled and we'll be happier more in our lives. And inshallah, God will answer our prayers. 
But if you fall into the category of thinking that we're something, we're worthy, lifting our chest up, walking on earth as if we own the earth, and not thanking God for anything that He's given us, for all the things around us, then surely our prayers won't be accepted. Now the seventh point with the, which the Imam tells the man is Satan. He says people who have come to know Satan as the enemy, who realize Satan in himself is something that is going to move them away from all the blessings, move them away from the blessings after life, from heaven, from the Ahlul Bayt, into hell. Because Satan, all he wants to do is for us to be with him. To be with him in this life and the life after, which means to be in hell, which means to burn. So people who know Satan and understand that he's the enemy, at the same time their deeds show differently. Their actions show that they're befriending Satan, they're making him happy. I call myself a person who's religious. At the same time, my actions are actions of which God is not happy with and Satan is. I realize that this is my enemy. I realize that God is my friend. And moving towards God brings me all blessings and happiness of life in this world and the world after and I realised that Satan does the complete opposite at the same time I move closer to Satan these people, their prayers will not be accepted this is the word of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam now the eighth point which the Imam has mentioned and in some ways it's the most important point because it's a point unfortunately most of us human beings don't understand and it's a point that most of us have fallen into it's a pitfall that we've all stepped into us as an ummah us as a whole nation as the nation of Islam as the nation of Muslimin as a nation of people who believe the truth have stepped into this pitfall unfortunately so what is it that the Imam says is the eighth point and the last point? The Imam says that the people who look at other people's faults and flaws and bring it into themselves and make a big deal of it and when it comes to their own faults and flaws they brush it behind. I look at the person who, for example, is wearing gold, a man who's wearing gold, I shake my head at him. And I think, how much higher I am because I don't wear gold. At the same time, my prayers are they on time? My prayers are they with the right intention? My food that I eat, is it all halal? Can we all say yes to these answers? Because you see, the problem is we look at people and see them lower than us. As soon as someone does something wrong we're very quick to mention it. But how quick are we to sit down and look at our own faults examine them one by one go through them and understand that these must be corrected. Understand that our faults must come first, then look at other people's faults. Understand that looking at people and thinking that they're below you or less than you is the biggest mistake you could make. So let's first come together in Muharram, in these majalis, where we cry for Imam Hussain, where we see what Imam Hussain has done for us. And see what we can do for Imam Hussain. What does Imam Ali say to do to get out of these pitfalls? He tells us to clear our intention. He tells us to clear our intention of our niyyah. When you want to do a good deed, 
Think why you want to do this. When you want to go and step into the Majlis of Imam Hussain, it's a very holy Majlis. It's a very holy gathering. A place where people have gathered in the name of Hussain. When you're taking these steps toward the Majlis, think why you're taking those steps. Is it for the community for you, of, of you to think that you're religious? Is it for your parents to be happy of you because you go to these majalis? If you're an older member of the community, are you going to these majalis to show off to other people that you're religious? When we do our prayer, if you wake up in the middle of the night and do the night prayer, which is between midnight and Adhan al-Subh, the morning prayer. So in the, in the middle of the night you wake up and you do your prayer. With what intention do you get up to do this prayer? Is it the intention to show off to people around you, the family members, that four in the morning you've woken up to do a night prayer where everyone else is asleep? So next day they wake up and say, well done. So next day, they gather around themselves and say, this person done night prayer, he must be religious. Because not only does this prayer not bring you any higher towards God, but it brings you far, far further down than the people who don't do this act. So Amir al tells us to clear our intentions. What else? He tells us to be scared of God. Understand God. Understand this thing which is giving you everything. And ask for nothing. Who is giving you so much and is still giving day by day. Be scared to go against this God. He has put a path down to you. He has shown you the light. If you're sitting in a majlis of Imam Hussein, if you're sitting in a majlis in Muharram, if you're sitting and hitting yourselves on the head for Ashura, this is a blessing, this is a light that's been lit for you to follow. Don't cross this light, don't go left and right. Go in this straight line which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lit up for you. The path for which Imam Hussein gave his life, the path for which the tents of his people, of his own family were burnt. So many sacrifices were made not only by himself, but by his family, the small children. What they gave up for me and you, for us to be guided, for us to be led in the right path. That's why Imam Hussein made his way towards Karbala. When he came up against them, he said to them, O people of Iraq, what is it that I've done to you for you to hate me so much and want to kill me? What is it that I've taken from, away from you? Have I killed one of you? Have I done anything to you? You're the ones that invited me to Iraq. Why is it you want to kill me? And what was their response? Omar ibn Sa'd takes the arrow, pulls it back and tells people, watch. Everyone watch me Because I want to be known As the person that throws The first arrow Towards Imam Hussein So we pray to God We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To put us In the army of Hussein To put us In the people Such as the Shuhada and the martyrs that died behind Hussein sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and not those who killed him, and not those who went against him, and not those who called themselves Muslims and raised their swords against the head of Hussein sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahu ya Allah